want to play ragtime music on your guitar, then this is the video for you. Hi everybody, it's Martin from the Washboard Resonators. On this video, there will be four parts. Uh, we're going to look at the history of what ragtime music is, just very briefly. It will also help you understand the constituent parts of what makes music ragtime. Should help you be able to arrange your own other songs in this style. Number two, we'll look at a Blind Blake song. Number three, we'll look at a Blind Boy Fuller song, which is a bit more complex. And, you know, number four, what I'm going to do is show you some simplified versions of the song so you can back up the singing and then how to sort of find some sort of fancy little breaks when you're taking instrumental passages. So a little bit of history. What is ragtime music? I think the simplest way to think about it is that it is like the bridge between um, uh, European classical music, like march music, and also African-American banjo, uh, minstrel singing. And then it's the bridge to what came later um, in terms of like jazz and swing music. So how does ragtime work? Well, the name ragtime um, is an abbreviated um, phrase um, like ragged time. So if you were playing a popular song of the day, you could play it straight or, or the band leader or the band might say, let's do this in ragged time. Let's rag it up, you know, and that kind of phrase became known as ragtime. Now, what it basically kind of means is that um, you're kind of giving the music more bounce by syncopating it. Um, what is syncopation? So syncopation is where um, you can have the underlying natural beat of a song, but instead of playing, um, you know, say the melody that kind of mostly fits with that underlying beat, so most of the notes land on the beat, what you do is you kind of completely change that. You make it so the melody almost works against the beat. It bounces in between the beat, off of the beat. And it gives things um, a little bit more of kind of an interesting drive. I'll try and demonstrate. So here's kind of normal. Here's something a little bit raggy. You kind of get the idea. That's the same notes, but just kind of repositioned to make them a bit more interesting. So the constituent parts of this kind of music are, you know, uh, European march music. Yeah, very, very popular. Um, even, you know, African-Americans would play in brass bands. Um, where I'm from, which is Huddersfield in Yorkshire in England, brass banding was a massive pastime and still it actually is through the Victorian era, often playing popular songs of the day, marches, light classical pieces, things like that. It should come as no surprise then that those guys that were playing strict march music that then kind of learnt about this ragtime feel played this and then eventually that turns into Dixieland kind of jazz music, that very early kind of music, which I think it was 1917 when the first song was released, which had sort of jazz in the title. A lot of the chords in ragtime music are very simple, straightforward chords, like you might even call them banjo chords. And when you think about banjo playing, typical banjo playing, which would have happened on, you know, plantations and what people call minstrel singing. Simple chords, what you'll hear is the underlying rhythm is completely syncopated because you're doing this. And my thumb's doing an and beat. So the natural, the natural sense of that banjo music is completely syncopated. And you can see all these elements get drawn together into ragtime and that then becomes early jazz. <laughs> So why is Victorian piano-based music of interest to blues guitar players? Well, you've got to think about what came before a lot of the classic blues players. You know, people that were recording in the 20s and the 30s, um, Blind Blake, Blind Boy Fuller, uh, Reverend Gary Davis, Robert Johnson, 
they all have blues songs in their repertoire, don't they, you know? But they've all also got, um, you know, ragtime based music. So that was Robert Johnson. So just think about um, his song, Hot Tamales. It's a ragtime song. Uh, what we're gonna do later in the lesson, we'll look at how you construct those kind of chord sequences. First up, let's just turn a very simple blues in E into a ragtime blues in E and figure that out. Okay, so if you're getting into this kind of ragtime blues music and you're a guitar player, I can honestly say there is no finer guitar player than Blind Blake. He's just the best and that's just a fact. Um, we'll look at a Blind Blake song now. So one of his classic songs is a song called Diddy Wah Diddy. Now Diddy Wah Diddy is just a 12 bar blues. But if you listen to it on the record, you might not necessarily recognize that because the feel is completely different. So what I'm gonna do is turn a typical E blues. So think about an E, an e 12 bar blues. I'm just gonna play out of the position of E just to give you an idea of how that might sound. So you see, I'm, in, I'm playing an E chord. We've all heard these. kind of nonsense a million times before. Now, let's now think about how we turn that kind of bluesy into a ragtime bluesy. -y. So one of the things that you'll often find with a lot of ragtime guitar based music, obviously you can play in any kind of key, you know, you can learn stuff. I generally find that to get that kind of boom chip, boom chip kind of bass sound, which is uh, very much the marching music bass line, you think about March music. It has that marching kind of military kind of rhythm to it. You think about country music. You know, ragtime music has that. To get that, it's often good if you can have your tonic um, on the fifth string, because then you can go down to the fifth note in the scale to get that that sound. So when you do you play out of say keys like say E, the fifth is actually lower, I mean higher pitched. It doesn't sound quite as good. So a lot of ragtime music on guitar is often based in keys like C, um, you know, things like that A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my capo on to fret four, okay, and then I'm going to play at the C position. What this now means, my, my finger is on the tonic of E, my C chord is now technically an E chord, so I can use all the positions that really work really well to get those bass fingers. But I'm still technically in the key of E. Um, let's just check tuning. Ooh. I should say actually that just to be sort of in keeping with this, I'm playing my um, 1899 made Washburn guitar here because it's the right guitar for the era. So I'll just demonstrate a little bit of how kind of diddy wah diddy goes, so you can hear it. There's a great big mystery, yeah, it sure is worrying me, this diddy wah diddy, diddy wah diddy. Wish somebody tell me what well, did what did it mean? So there was a 12 bar in E uh, with a very different feel. Let's now kind of learn it. So basically it's a C chord, it's an F chord, you think about an F. Um, I play it in a different way, we'll look at it in a second. A G chord, dead simple. With the occasional little like G7 kind of sound in there. So, the first thing you'll hear when I do this, it's very syncopated, it's very bouncy. I, 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 I wish I was one tenth as good as Blind Blake. I, I've got a book of like his songs and I should really work through it um, because I'd love to, to master his kind of style. Uh, it's, it, it, it baffles me when I hear him. You can't believe what you're hearing sometimes. The, the, the syncopation is incredible. Um, here's my bastardized version for you. So the first thing you'll hear is that 
lovely bit of syncopation on the start. Now that's quite complex, that took me a long time to learn. I'll show you now. What I'm doing is I'm playing a C chord. What I'm doing is I'm putting um, my little finger on, on the C note and I'm putting this finger on the G um, below it. So it's, if you think, imagine that ragtime piano and you imagine the, uh, the, the, um, the bass line. The bass line is going to go dum 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 ga gum dum ga gum it's doing this skip on the end of beat four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one. That's what that is. That, it's a bit like a stumble. I think I've heard Stefan Grossman refer to that as a stumble. So that comes even before beat one. And one, two, three, okay? So the way, the way I used to practice that was I'd just even, just mute the strings. I didn't, you don't even play the chord. You're just trying to get that. I find a thumb pick really helps this style. I think Blind Blake would play with a thumb pick and bare fingers. I think Robert Johnson did, if I'm honest. Uh, so you can do it if you want. So you, what you hear there is it's going patum, tum, 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 patum. Now if you can't do that, then just don't worry. Now the next thing is you play the C chord. What you do is you you pick up the the open E and you just go up chromatically and you're kind of hinting at a kind of almost like a kind of Charleston dun, dun. yeah you you all think of the Charleston um, long short okay so. You know, slow the video down, you've got the half speed button in the corner somewhere. And what you're trying to do all the time, you're trying to do that marching bass line. So hopefully you can see enough of that to figure it out. Okay, so the first time you do it, you play it, you, you resolve that Charles into a C chord. You then go to a C7 chord. And I don't really chalcen it there. Then the next chord in this sequence is an F chord. Um, what you hear I do, um, you can't do that stumble because the note that you need isn't on another string, it's on the same string. So what I do is I play the open E string. And then I, I play the F chord like this. And I think what you'll find is a lot of people that play ragtime kind of blues guitar, they will often, uh, oh, the string slipped. Um, they will often do um, this. Let's just make sure that's okay. Yeah. Um, you play the F chord. So you, you, you play the, f the first three notes like this. You see? String um, five, four, and three. That's the wrong way around, isn't it? Oh, gosh. Um, two, three, and four. So you're doing like a partial F. So it's a bit like you think about a bar chord, but what you're doing is um, playing those notes. And then what you do is you bring your thumb over. So now you've got this chord. And then what you kind of do is you often use the octave, which is on um, string four. What's really good about this kind of position is it, it frees your hand up, your little finger, and then this, this finger here comes down onto the, the E string when needed. You've got all that fancy stuff, which you'll need later for the solo parts. So, okay, so what I do is I do that kind of syncopated da -dum, dun dun on the bass. So the open string, thumb goes on to technically what is fret one behind the capo. And what I tend to do is, that shape is then play the little finger down on um, the third fret from the capo. So it should sound something like this. Okay, so let's just recap that. C7. Yeah, a little bend if you want. 
So I'm just playing that third note and just bending it a bit. And this is a real blind, another key blind Blake lick. So that, that stumble, that syncopated thing is massively blind Blake. You see some of the old adverts for his records in the 1920s and they'd say, Blind Blake and his amazing singing guitar. It's because he can make it kind of sound like a, a voice whining. A lot of those kind of wham kind of sounds that he'd do. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I actually start with that, that, that little finger actually on fret free on the, the, the uh, second string. Then you go back to the C. I just play a typical C and then a very quick G7. You see that? Okay. Um, let's recap. next lick and it, you, you hear it a lot in Blind Boy Fuller, you hear it a lot in Blind Blake. I'm going to play out a, a, a G. That's a great little syncopated lick and you're going to use this a lot. And basically what the idea of this lick is, you play G7. And this is, you know, this is difficult to sort of show without the tabs. I'm not going to do tabs. If you need tabs for this stuff, this lesson isn't for you. I'm expecting that you can play a bit enough, you have a rough an idea, and you can slur the video, you can watch my fingers, and you can figure it out and transcribe it by ear, which is the best way to learn, if I'm honest. If you really want to get good at playing, don't be reading tabs. Um, figure stuff out by ear. It's much, it takes much, you know, it takes a lot longer in the, the initial stages, but it, it makes a much truer kind of connection between the music and um, the synapses in your brain. I'm playing the G of the G chord. What I'm doing then is I'm putting my finger down on the third fret of the uh, the third string. And then I'm playing the open B in quick succession, the open the second string. And then I'm hammering down on this the third fret of the um, the second string. fret of the top string. Let me show you this. Can you see that? So you slow that down, you look at that. You might need to work on that for a while if you're fairly new to this. Until you get it to speed. You know. So the, okay, so that's the uh, the fifth chord in, in this blind lake thing. Uh, we're now then going to hit the F again. Back to the C, G7, C. Start again. you're singing there's a great big mystery and it sure is worrying me this did it what did it did it what did it wish you might tell me did it what did it means so next up let's look at the um the kind of instrumental passages when you're not singing and this is where you know the the, the ragtime tradition of the ragtime piano player was you know you, you would get you know judge and how good you were by how fancy your kind of uh, instrumental breaks were. And you take, you know, you have signature licks. You know, you'd stop and then do like a fancy lick. Diddly, diddly, diddly. So let's now look at some of the ones that I kind of like to use. 
So I tend to do like play and then punctuate it with a lick. You heard the lick there. So, so I'm sort of stopping dead. And what I'm doing there is like a little C blue, uh, blues kind of lick. So I'm hitting the little finger on fret two, uh, so fret three of the second string. And then I'm going up one fret, a semitone. Then playing the open E. And then after the open E, I'm playing fret one on the second string. I'm kind of climbing back up, you know, I'm playing fret two on the um, third string, open, and then landing on uh, the fourth string fret two, which kind of makes the C chord. So it should sound something like this. Okay, something like that. Okay. Um, Sometimes on the F I like to do like very bendy things because it just sounds very blind blaky. That kind of thing. Maybe a little fast. That kind of thing, you know, and then... That should give you an idea of, of how you do it. You know, you know, listen to. Stuff. I mean, I think one of the, one of the blind late ones. He basically plays like a little boogie line off the F. Something like that. Yeah, that's it. Okay then. So that gets us into the basic idea of ragtime. You think about basically country music with that bass line as the underlying kind of basis for it. You make it interesting and, and syncopated and danceable by making the bass line a little bit more interesting. And you put those lovely little lines that kind of syncopate and bounce around over the top of it. Okay. Um, Next up, we're going to look at uh, Rag Mama Rag by Blind Boy Fuller, a classic song. It's much more expanded harmonically. Um, before we do that, though, now's a good time just to say that if you find these videos useful, um, do help us in return. Um, the Washboard Resonators, we are professional musicians. We go around the country playing um, and we release, you know, original music in the style. Um, the best way to support us is to go and join the mailing list. It's down there. There's a little triangle down here. Join the mailing list. Um, find us on social media. If you like, if you, if you you know, if you think this is useful, drop us a dollar or a pound or a euro into the buyers a coffee thing. It just helps massively. Uh, thank you very much. So next up, we're going to look at um, a blind boy fuller song, Rag Mama Rag. I've got my 1930s triolian in honour of him because he played a, a duolian, which is a steel body uh, back in the 1930s. It's the nearest thing I've got at the moment. And uh, I'm, I've got, you know, I'm playing out of E again, but with the C position. Um, so the song should sound something like this. I'm going downtown with my hat in my hand And I'm looking for a woman, ain't got no man Just where we're looking for a needle in the sand Looking for a woman, ain't got no man Rag, rag now I said rag now, I said do that rag So the vast majority of ragtime music sounds like these four sequels. What are they? If you know about music theory or the Nashville numbering system, you'll have heard of people saying that the songs are 1, 6, 2, 5, or 2, 5, 1, all these kind of things. What that refers to is that, you know, in this case, the, the, the C shape is the home chord. It's the one chord. 
because it's, it's the song's based in the key of C, and C is the first note in the C scale. You know, and then the D would be the number two, etc. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if we look at what number six is, number six in this case is this note, which is always four semitones or four frets down, is the six chord. Now, technically, normally the six chord would be played as a minor chord. That it means that it's perfectly uh, good in terms of its its harmony base. So you've got that C to the A minor, and you've all we've all heard a million songs that do this. Now, what people do in jazz is often you just turn all the chords into like sevenths or fancier versions of sevenths. So what you're doing is you're, do, you're doing a one to a six, but you're playing it as an A seven in this case, an A seven shape. Okay. Then you're playing the next chord, which is technically a D7. Blind Boy Fuller played it there, like a D7 shape. So you just think about the D7, if you don't know that one, it's the same as a C. You just take it up a fret, two frets, a tone, and you put your little finger down, um, you know, below there to make that, that seven shape. Then you've got a G7. So just to recap, C, A7, D7, G7, and that is a one, Six, two, five, where all the chords have been turned into sevens except that first C chord. So, when you think about um, that, a lot of the old ragtime pieces were made out of six two five ones. A lot of popular music now is made out of six two fives one. There's that. Um, I'm sure you've probably all seen those videos where the guys play the ukuleles and they, they show that like eight million songs, Britney Spears and the Backstreet Boys and whoever. They all come from these 6251 chord progressions. Well, it's the same thing. And when you go back in time, let me just retune. You think about, say, swing music, um, which came along in the 1930s. Believe it or not, that's the same chord sequence, but you just play it swinging. Now, I'm playing out of A. What you need to know is it's a 1, 6, but you play it as a, as a minor. You play the 2 as a minor because that's technically what it should be. We're not changing it to like a 7th. Then you've got the five as a seventh, and back to the one major. One, six, two, five. If we then just transmute this A version of swing music, I've got rhythm in the key of A, to like the Ragman Rag from the 1930s by Blind Boy Fuller, it's an A. Go down four frets. F sharp seven. B7, B7, start again. Or you just play them the sevens. Okay, so what you can see is, is harmonically this, you know, fits in. Think about Robert Johnson, think about um, Hot Tamales. He plays out of C. He plays this version of C, which is a bit like you think of an A chord, and then you think about, you do these long A's. And then wherever your little finger lands with these long these long chords, that's the, the, uh, the what the chord is. So I'm on, I'm on an A note. Well, Robert John's playing on C. To blind boy fuller um, let's now teach you the licks in there so the blind boy fuller song you could, you could play the low G but I'm just So that's, I'm just keeping the thumb going on the C when I do it. One, two, and walk down. So you do two on, the, two on that, that C note and then walk down. And I'm playing the A7, like that shape. So basically play it, playing like a long A. I'm taking that, that, that thing up. That's an A7. Then Blind Boy Fuller tends to play that seven shape. And G7. And that 
with that lick I showed you in the blind leg. You can, you can split out there. So that's cool, isn't it? So, um, so you got that. Low. You keep that dun 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 bass line going. song, Blind Lake does this, uh, Blind Boy Fuller does this lick a lot. To get back to that sixth chord, and I think it's a really cool lick, and he sings in unison with it. So what is that lick? You've got two on fret, um, okay, we're going to go back to, back to where we are, so it's fret seven on the fifth string. Two notes. Open on uh, the fourth string. First fret, second fret. Then you go back to the starting note, which is fret three on the fifth string. Then you walk down chromatically every every fret. Okay, so that's how you back up the singing. You hear blind blind uh, boy fuller do a lot of these kind of licks. You leave it, do a bit like that blind lake thing where it's, it, it's a bit like a stumble, but you just. You know. Um, so. They'll often do that kind of thing. Just kind of, you know, play a little bit more off the, the top string. So then, yeah. Um, so, so you sing over that. Now, what we're going to do when we do some breaks? Let's kind of look at that. One of the the, the, the the most common easy ways to make something sound a bit more jazzy is you just you do a chromatic movement with whichever chord you're playing. So when I do the solos in this, sometimes I'll go for like I'll play the A7 like a normal A7. You think about that shape, you know. I'm doing a kind of bum, 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 bum. It's a child, it's like Charleston, very kind of 20s rhythm. And you can do the ragtime bass line, keep that going. Or just, you know, you make it very syncopated by just doing that static bass. And then what I might do is sometimes play the, play the D7 in the normal D7 shape. And you can just do like a hammer on with the, uh, on the top string. Or mix that with like a little chromatic move, so something like this for now. And I'm using my thumb to play that note, which is the second fret on the low string, which is technically the third note in the scale, which is a strong note, and I use that as a bass, a bass note against that. So it should sound like this. Like I said before, the breaks are kind of what, what makes a break. It. That, that lick that I showed you earlier for Blind Blake. I just played the, because, because this break is technically twice as long as, the, as in the Blind Blake song. 
I just do like it's a very simple climb down. And what you can do is play this in triplets, so it goes like this. And it just kind of, you know, changes the, the, the sort of sound. Uh, let's just uh, go from the G. I'll do it with triplets now. That's like a little way you can, and there's loads of things you could do. You know, you could. I quite like using, um, if you play C chord and then put your little finger down um, on the second string and then just go up from between fret five and fret four. They all work as part of the, as, as notes that you want. So you could, you could, you, you know, work around there. You do something, you know. Uh, So there's some ideas for that. Let's now uh, finish up the video and that's good. Okay then, let's just recap before we finish up. So what have we learned there? We've learned a bit of history about ragtime, what makes it, where it comes from. We then looked at Blind Blake and we took you know, a, a, a blues in E and we showed how you can make that very bluesy sounding thing in E into a ragtime sounding blues in E. We looked at how you know the 1-5 um, marching style bass line underpins it and then the melody sort of bounces off of it rather than sits with it if that makes sense we'll do some breaks so you can play that song you know sing it and then play some instrumentals and some little ideas to get you started in that we then looked at you know at this uh, blind boy fun song rag mama rag which is a bit more complex harmonically we looked at how those chords underpin a lot of swing music and other kind of forms of music and then we looked at some breaks there so look that's just a, a way to get started playing this style. If you really want to play this style, the, the only way you're ever going to really get good at it is you're going to have to listen to Blind Blake and Blind Boy Fuller and Reverend Gary Davis and learn their songs note for note. And then once you've kind of got that far, you know, um, you'll be able to, you'll have under your fingers enough, you know, uh, the skills to be able to do this to any popular song. I've got a music book somewhere here. I'm, I might not be able to find it now, but it's from the 19, like late 30s, early 40s. And it's literally an instruction book, how to play ragtime. Um, and that's from the 30s and it takes simple pop, pop songs of the day, you know, T for two or something, and it plays it and there's, in one page, it's straight, and in page two, it shows how you move the melody, how you kind of stretch some notes, shorten some notes, and you make the melody more bouncy. With this, it's got the same left hand pattern. A friend of mine who's a piano player, he uh, came over once and was playing through the book. It was really interesting because the basic version sounds quite stolid and boring. The, the raggy version on the right-hand page was like bouncy and lovely. And it was um, a really nice example that, you know, back in the day, people would just, I guess, have to, you know, learn this, this new way of playing, this, um, this way of not putting those melody notes where you would expect them to be, to make them more interesting. And you know what? I remember sitting in my car on lunch times when I had a day job, working my bum off on ragtime pieces and struggling like mad little metronome clip to the car steering wheel tick tock tick um well there's a tune of metronome with a metronome in it and just trying to like get the bass line and the independence it is difficult to do it well um but um it's something that you'll get if you work at it so thank you everybody do um like subscribe comment it really helps join the mailing list is the best way to support us uh, buy a record, buy a t-shirt, drop us uh, a little bit of money. It all helps massively. Thank you and bye-bye for now.